What's going on boys and girls? Welcome back to a another video by yours truly. Uh, this video is purely dedicated to my girl Shinyan. Um, not purely dedicated to her because she's really more of just like a nuker inside of this composition. But the whole purpose behind me making this video is because she's another character that a lot of people do not use. And I just wanted to show you guys that she is totally usable inside of the Abyss. You can totally 36 star the Abyss with her. So that's the whole purpose of this video. Just show a little dedication to my girl Shinyan. And, uh, you know, any Shinyan fans out there, maybe you want to run this composition if you have all the uh, tools necessary, which we're going to get in here in a bit. But, uh, yeah, it's a very nuke-tastic composition. Everybody's just a nuker, and you're constantly rotating and funneling energy to the uh, to the nukers, which are Shinyan and Mona. And, yeah, it's fun. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So I legit took my Shinyan from, like, level 50 up to 75, and then I ran out of books. Yeah, it's tough. It's hard out here for a pimp. Uh, so she's just at level 75, which, which is good, means she can get better. Um, she's rocking the Wolf's Gravestone. One, of course, as always, for drip purposes. And two, it's actually a really good weapon on her, and I don't have a red stone uh, thresher, Ito signature weapon, which is also best in slot for her. Um, I like this weapon on her a lot. It looks really cool, and it's also very good because her burst scales off of her attack. So you definitely want to have something like the Wolf's Gravestone. She doesn't really care too much about crit rate unless you have a perfectly mid-maxed Shinyan with good crit rate stats and stuff, which is very hard to pull off. Uh, or if you're running a team dedicated purely towards her, like Ice um, Super Conduct for debuffs, you know, we're not doing that. Just nuke tastic. I'm rocking the Wolf's Gravestone. Uh, a Black Cliff Slasher would also be a good option if you have that. Um, some people like to use the White Blind, but that does not help her towards her burst whatsoever. Uh, and then you have the Luxurious Sea Lord as well as another option. I have a dog shit build for her basically she should be running pale flame and the other uh physical set two piece two piece 25 percent totaling to 50 percent physical damage bonus which is going to help her with her burst i don't have it i don't have it built up i have dog shit pieces so this is what we're rocking which is not really that good she can get much better um she's c6 of course and i have her at 1 6 and 11 guys i put a lot of like I'm at 424,000 more just because I'm that damn, um, <laughs> I guess you can call it bored. I guess I'm bored with the game to the point where I'm just building up everybody. Probably going to build up Amber next and shock the world. Uh, so yeah, we got her at 11 and we still got some days to prepare for Nahida, so I'm not tripping, but not getting off the topic, boys. That's pretty much the build for her. Uh, and all we're focusing on is just doing as much damage as we can with her burst and then swapping her off field. Uh, Bennett and Kazuha. This is a Bennett Kazuha cliche composition, but truth be told, you kind of need them if you want Shinyan to do some work alongside Mona as well. Kazuha's rocking a Favonia sword, uh, Brutus and Veneer. He's C0, 8, 8, and 8, and he has 769 EM, and he's level 80. Mona is also rocking a Favonius Codex. I'm not using the Witsith with her because the Codex is actually very comfortable to use because of the energy funneling regeneration. Not to mention her passive scales off her energy recharge. It works very well. And because you have Bennett on the team, it's okay if you don't have a shit ton of crit damage. Like people focus too much on stats, right? Like crit damage on the Witsith. It is good. The Wits of Buffs, it is best in slot for a Nuke Mona. However, it's very, very impractical in the Spiral Abyss, unless you're going up against a boss, like one rotation type of ordeal. So using the Wits Sith inside of this Abyss format, 100% can clear the hell out of the Abyss, get your, your bang for your buck, but it's not that practical. I'd much rather use the Favonius Co uh, Codex and funnel energy to the rest of the party so that I'm constantly doing my rotations, which you'll see in the showcase. Um, so yeah, we're rocking Favonius Codex, man. Now, another thing I want to mention, you can totally run Mona and do a rotation that ends up with her doing 400,000 damage on monsters. But again, that's another very impractical setup when you're going against a bunch of different monsters like this Abyss format. It's good for bosses, not so much for this Abyss format. So uh, we're not worrying about Mona doing 400K. We're just worrying about her doing 100 to 130K. In other words, we're not trying to really vaporize with her. She's just setting myself up for good nuke damage in a rotation fashion, if that makes sense. Uh, Emblem of Severed Fate is what we're using on her. She's at 200 ER, 66 over 146 with 240 EM. We are rocking an EM timepiece since we have on the Favonius Codex. So that EM timepiece was necessary to get some pretty sufficient EM because we might get some vaporized procs here and there with Mona. 
Um, she's C1, uh, and that's completely free to play. So, uh, and then I have her at eight, four, and two. Burst is really what you're all you're only concerned with, unless you're really just out here trying to mo a main Mona. <laughs> uh, and then we got Bennett, four, nine, and eleven, C6, no bless, oblige set, Skyward Blade. Y'all know my Bennett. If you've been keeping up the channel, he's he does not change. He's the same Bennett he's always been. Uh, but yeah, this is the team composition, boys. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention was floor 12, chamber 2, first half. Because we're doing only the first half of floor 12 with this composition. Chamber 2, those, uh, I forget the name of those guys. The beefy mechanical people, they're highly resistant to physical damage. So when you see my Shinyan's damage drop down big time, it's because they're highly resistant to physical damage. And I'm not running no super conduct or any physical debuffs in this composition. So... She's, her damage is like just going to drop off on that floor. But floor three and floor one, you, you should see some pretty good Chen Yin damage. The last thing I forgot to show you guys also, I forgot, I'm sorry. Her build is uh, like in terms of mid-maxing is decent. It's, it's decent. You kind of want as much crit damage as possible and good energy recharge as well. As well as attack percent, like attack percent, crit damage, and energy recharge are going to be the stats you want to go to for Shen Yen. Uh, the reason being is because her C2 guarantees you to crit strike with her burst. And because it guarantees you, well, obviously you just want to slap as much crit damage on your Shen Yen as possible. Uh, so I think a good mid-max Shen Yen will be around 200 to 210 crit damage if you're rocking a Wolf's Gravestone. You're rocking the red stone then that bad boy probably jumps up to like 260 or something but uh yeah you, you definitely want to put as much crit damage as possible on her and you want her er to be hovering around 160 i would say uh crit rate we don't really care about unless you are literally just the ultimate shin yin main then you can mid max that bad boy put her on two cryo one electro composition and then you'll be you'll be like all around slapping cheeks but yeah i forgot to mention this this is how you build your shin yin my bad guys